Hi, welcome Cleveland County. It's August. It's squash season. And we're in the squash patch with Jason Parker, his wife Emily, Barry Fields, am I correct? Is that the name? That's it, Barry Fields. Barry Fields Farm. And they grow lots of different things. But because we're highlighting squash in August, this is where we're standing. So Jason, tell us about your squash plants and when, when did you plant these? These went in the ground uh, June 13th. Okay, so this is, they're like two months almost. This is two months growth. Yes. Okay, and then behind us we have some babies that in three weeks about three weeks. You'll be picking squash. Like, and may I just pick this, Jason? Yes. If I can get it. Okay, there we go. We'll have squash like that in three weeks from these baby plants. Yes. So August must be the time to grow squash. It's, pretty, it's, a, it's a good time of the year to grow squash. Yeah. And, and eat it. That's why we're here. The, the heat, is, it's faster. It produces quicker and more often than this, in this weather we're having right now. Oh, that's great. Good to know. Now, Jason, uh, I know you didn't start out being a farmer. You put motors together. You put something together. Is that correct? Before you started farming? I did. I worked for a general motor supplier doing uh, rear ends for Cadillac and Corvette. and Which gave cars. you no experience to grow vegetables. Never touched vegetables growing except in Grandma's garden when we picked them. <laughs> there we go. And what she fixed for you. So folks, you don't have to start out being a farmer to be one later on in your life. And we're going to be showing you some shots of his greenhouse, of seeds. You now order seeds. You plant in the greenhouse. You start the babies and then you come out to these fields and plant. You have tomatoes yellow squash, zucchini, all kinds of lettuce you're planting right now, baby lettuce, which will be lettuce that you'll be able to have in the fall at the farmer's market, folks. Yes. Um, and you have some blueberries. Are, are you we still do. picking blueberries? They're down there. You're welcome to go pick them. <laughs> you know there's a lot of bushes there. There they, were 1,500 at one time. And they're probably, <laughs> what, 12, 16 feet tall now? by now you'd need an inspector gadget arms to reach them <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I know we talked a little bit about there are squash bugs yes. and of course so far this season you've not you've not had a squash bug here not yet but it's that time of year the, right, because the August fall. August and, and September would be when I guess the bugs decide they need to start foraging to Live for the up winter. For the winter. For the winter. Yes, yes. And uh, then, of course, there's always the problem of nematodes as well that can get in the squash plants. Yes. As I told you before, I used to grow squash, and it just killed my plants. Healthy one day, dead the next. It takes about a, two weeks, and they'll kill an entire row. They'll mm -hmm. just they'll eat it from one side, and they'll start, and it'll look like a lawnmower. And, Every day you'll lose a certain number of plants to those and they'll move out and pop your stuff out. So the best advice for that is don't ever use that same ground again unless you treat it. Yes. I also, we're going to get shots of this, how you buy your potting soil. It's in a huge bag. So we're going to show pictures of that. And of course it's a lot cheaper to buy it by bulk. It is. And uh, rather than just like little bags. Now I don't suggest if you're not doing like truck farming and showing up at the farmers mark to sell your produce that you invest in this big thing but it for for local farmers it's it's a wonderful way to get potting soil and be able to start your plants it is it's it's a lot cheaper than purchasing the bags mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and of course we're talking about making a profit uh but Jason earns every bit of the money that you receive for your vegetables. It's hot work, you're in the sun, you have to water your plants, you have to buy the seeds, and this goes for any local farmer. It's just plain hard work. It's continuous all summer. It never, there's not a break. You can't stop. 
Right. Just because you feel tired that day and not pick your stuff. You can't go to the beach in the summertime, in other words. No. No vacations in the summer. <laughs> so, all right. Well, um, and I know you've, you've just planted some tomato plants. Yeah. And you are at the farmer's market every Wednesday. Am I correct with that? We are now, yes. Okay, okay. But you are there every Saturday, kind of there in the middle of the farmer's market, if you all want to know where to go to get great-looking squash. We're right behind the farmer's market booth. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that, that's, that's a good way to, to have the direction for our, for our viewers. All right, Jason. Well, listen, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. For, for being here and being the farmer of the month and uh, the produce of the month. And um, so stay tuned, folks. We're going to be in the studio with Nancy Abasiekong talking about why you should eat a squash and how to prepare it. Stay tuned. I chose to come back because I had four children, a wife. I never completed high school. Had to quit my senior year to go to work. Got laid off didn't have too many options and seemed like a good idea at the time. I came back and got my GED uh, because I figured that was be more of a fast track to a career and it was. If you've never thought about it, just think about it. Go get your GED. Just go, just go learn. Just go, just go learn. I'm Norty Manning II here and each week right here on C19 TV I invite you to join me and guests for Meet Me at the Movies. We talk about the box office smashes, we talk about horrible films, we talk about old films from the vault. We spend time engaging in anything and everything relating to cinema, indie film, foreign films, international box office, we cover it all right here on Meet Me at the Movies. You're going to love it, and if you don't, blame somebody else. Welcome Cleveland County. So glad to have you here. This is August and we're talking about squash, which for some people I'm sure it's coming out your ears. I hope you're sharing it with your neighbors, but we're here with Nancy Abassie Kong this morning to talk about why you need to eat squash, the nutritional value, mm -hmm. how to store it, how to freeze it, and what else we can do with the abundance of squash now. Okay, yes. Squash is abundant when it comes in and our season here is from about June, early June through September. So if you have had squash, and of course there are two types of squash, summer squash and winter squash. Mm -hmm. And of course we've talked about winter squash before, the butternut right. and so forth. And today with our summer squash, there are several varieties. Uh, we might have the yellow crookneck, or yellow straight neck, right. which I think is what you saw uh, at the farm. Right, and we've just exactly. seen the exactly. straight neck. Uh -huh. uh, zucchini mm -hmm. is another summer squash. Right. Uh, and also patty pan or yes. scallop squash. Yes, and that's and more of the white the squash. The white, is that yes. Right? And, uh -huh. It's white. Uh, they could be yellow. Now we're seeing some yellow varieties, but the flesh uh -huh. on all of these is a creamy. Uh, creamy color, creamy right. white right. color. Right, right. And all of the summer squash are also another characteristic of them is that they are picked at an immature stage when the seeds are small and the oh, skin yeah. or the shell is not hardened. It's right. it's and not of course tough. that's what uh -huh. we want is a tender young squash. Right, so we get the full nutritional value of the right. entire vegetable. The entire vegetable and mm -hmm. you will eat the peel, do not peel them. Correct. Uh, with the summer squash, which again varies from our winter squash. Mm -hmm. So with that we're eating the whole thing. Uh, summer squash are um, nutritious mm -hmm. and the nutrients that we look for there are vitamin C okay. and potassium uh, and that level of vitamin C, the amount will vary some depending on the variety, but, oh, but they're course. still a good source okay. of vitamin C. They do have some vitamin A mm -hmm. uh, and some of the other nutrients, manganese and some other things, but primarily vitamin C and 
potassium. And then, of course, um, there's roughage with, with the right, fibers, some fiber. some fibers in there, too. Right, so and since we're eating the skin and everything, you. the peel, mm -hmm. then we will have some fiber. But squash are so high in water, they have such a high water content, uh, that they... Um, we don't get as much fiber from them as we would from some other vegetables, okay. but still eating the whole thing. Right. Uh, they right. can be prepared uh, in lots of different ways, and we'll talk about in just a moment. But when you're selecting squash, whether yes. you're in the garden or at the farmer's market right. or the grocery store, because really we have squash available to us year round. Uh, yes, we do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Year round, but it's mm -hmm. best when we're getting them locally right here. Uh, we want them about four to seven inches long, small, narrow, yes. again, so that they're tender. Mm -hmm. And um, then when you are, uh, when you bring them home, you will put them in, store them in the refrigerator okay. in a plastic bag, an open plastic bag or a perforated a plastic bag. You want okay. some ventilation. Okay, uh, with them. of course. And keep them away from uh, fruits or foods that produce ethylene, like apples or uh, tomatoes or uh, some other foods like that. But storing them in the refrigerator. Because the ethylene uh, will do what? Uh, it causes them to um, get dark. To further mature, okay. Um, mm -hmm. Further ripen, so ripen, okay. uh huh. See, so just so what you those. buy at the stage, you that's the stage you want to prepare. That's the stage that you want. And okay. actually, you have they're fairly perishable, so use within a week to ten days. Good. Good. And if you have sliced more squash than you can use, mm -hmm. uh, you have about two days or so to use that up. Go okay. ahead and if you've prepared some. All right. uh, but we're putting them in the refrigerator, uh, not washed. Right. And you wash them just before you use them, which is, is typical for most uh, of the vegetables and fruits that we've talked about Correct. storing there. What about freezing? If we have the abundance we need to perhaps preserve them. Yes. So I was just going to slice and freeze, but you said no, no, no. Right. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> we do have to blanch, blanch okay. them. Okay. Uh, water blanch or steam blanch, but water blanching is is most typical. Slicing your squash a couple of uh, maybe a half inch thick or right. so forth, and then just put them in blanch about three minutes in your rolling boiling water to blanch, lift them out, chill, and uh, then package. Or you can put them on a cookie sheet after they've been blanched and chilled. Yes. And then that way you can take out however few or many oh. you want at a time. Great, great, great. Now I, another I've, that for me that would suit me better. Right. To get just get whatever right. handful How, I need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. So Good. just doing that blanching and then that's called a tray <clears throat> method of, of freezing. But you don't leave them other than overnight, 12 hours or so, then take them off and put them in your freezer bags right. or freezer containers. Now, if you're going to be doing zucchini and uh, zucchini bread or you want some for baking and that type of product, mm -hmm. breads or cakes, mm -hmm. you can grate the zucchini or the squash uh, and steam blanch that for about one to two minutes until it's translucent. Okay. And then you put that into a container and chill the container. You'll chill the this squash in the container because again, you don't want to get any more water, oh, water. in those oh. small oh. grated shards. Oh, and chill it by what? Just stick it in the refrigerator? Uh, well, you or can just in, put in it your water, ice water ice bag? Ice water, right. Have a bowl what or a something with ice idea. water and put your container in and stir occasionally and that hastens the, the chilling mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. And then of course you would seal and label and you're ready to freeze at that what point. What a great, uh, I, mm -hmm. you've saved so many steps. That's right. wonderful. And when you take it out, because again of the high water content, mm -hmm. you may have water drain away. So drain that away before you use that in your breads. Or you might use that as part of your liquid into the into your mixture. Oh well. But of account course. for that additional water. Right. Well when you know, after you water. thought you could put it in like a little strainer, collect the liquid. Right, let that drain and out then of your use colander. That 
right. with, it's with whatever the recipe calls. It's perfectly fine to use it in something, but if you put that in with your regular mixture of your oil and eggs or whatever, it may be too thin. You oh, may have yes. too thin of a batter. What a great so. suggestion. Mm -hmm. Ah, but. well, wonderful. Well, listen, Nancy, and uh -huh. I forgot to identify you, Nancy Abassier Kong. Consumers, family and, family and consumer sciences. Extension agent. Extension agent. Well, I want to call it because you are to me the director of that department. So oh. we're we're going to call it that. Okay. Today. Today. <laughs> it might might be right. something and different. And for that department, I guess I am. Yeah, of course you are. Right. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so uh -huh. much as always with your knowledge and of course you put the newsletter together right we will have two fact sheets yes. on our website yes. about yellow or summer squash yes nancy again thank you very much and folks remember to stay tuned for the cooking part of our show we have an interesting guest who will be doing cooking uh several squash dishes so stay tuned I feel like learning how to speak Spanish is a great thing because I have lost several customers because of my inability to speak Spanish. Um, and that started a couple years ago. And since then, I've tried to learn little pieces and phrases so that I can communicate with them. Even if you can only say one or two words to a customer, their face lights up when you have some kind of connection with them. Hi, join me, Jackie Sibley Newton, as I host Experience Cleveland County, a show all about the Cleveland County Chamber and our partners working together to make this a better community to live, work, and play. If you'll tune in, you'll learn all about attractions, events, and industry in our community, and I bet you'll learn something you didn't know about your own hometown. This is a broadcast service of Cleveland Community College on C19, found on Spectrum Cable, but you can also view it online at c19.tv. Welcome back, Cleveland County. We're cooking squash today, and we are cooking it with a Renaissance man. His name is Roger Aker. He holds many, uh, he wears many hats. He's an elected official, soil and water mm -hmm. conservation district. Are you co-chair or? Vice chair. Vice chair. Uh, he can play any instrument on the planet but the drums. And he also has Roger's pool service, so he will take care of your swimming pool or your hot tub. Mm -hmm. Okay, Absolutely. very good, very good. And he can cook. So, Roger, tell us what we're cooking today. Today we're cooking zucchini squash uh, pasta. Okay. And the sauce, not the not the noodles. Right, 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 uh, right, right. And it's basically, I've actually have decided to become a vegan. Oh, so okay. So I'm trying to take meat entirely out of my diet. Yes, and, very good. And dairy very good. and all that. Okay. But uh, this is just a good alternative. It's real light. It's real tasty. It's definitely healthy for you. And when you can use vegetables in season, that's even better. Absolutely. Summertime's the best time. Mm-hmm. So, so let me get started. Yeah, I absolutely would. Right, Here's your spaghetti. The, mm -hmm. Get these in because they take the longest. There we go. Okay. And I'll let them get a little soft before I All push right, them down. That's good. And don't break them. Oh, that's good. Because that's like horrible to me. Okay. You know, leave them long. Sacrilegious. You yes, have to have absolutely. a spaghetti that long. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can suck yes, it in. Absolutely. Very good. Okay. Um, and we'll start. What we do is we take like two tablespoons of olive oil. All right, which by the way is already in the and pan. And we've got it in there and we've got it heated up. And we'll add one medium Vidalia onion. Okay. Chopped up. Okay. And of course, in the interest of time, we've chopped all these vegetables, but I think right. we all know how to chop. Yes. And we just want to get these caramelized. Okay. And turn that down just a little bit. And caramelized, they would be like kind of brown, well, clear. Translucent. Translucent, mm -hmm. very good. And it won't take long for this to happen. Because okay. I did have the heat up there pretty good. Okay. So once they are translucent, we'll okay. add the zucchini. And what I do on the zucchini is I cut them lengthwise. 
Okay. Uh, and you mean then, like so you have long spears yeah, like that? Yeah, cut them chop about them that one way. inch pieces. Oh, okay, that, good. They stay together better and they just feel better in your mouth. Okay, that's good. Good, good. And the same thing with the squash. And of course, zucchini and yellow squash are all squash. Yes. And Nancy talked about zucchini, and they're almost like synonymous. They're relative. They're cousins. They are. I mean, and they evidently don't pay any attention in the, the grocery store about the difference in them because they're the same price. Oh, per pound. very good. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So. It's, uh, and so these are kind of like uh, one inch pieces, maybe, or a ha probably a half an inch cube, square. So they're nice, they're bigger pieces than if you just did chop, chop, yeah, chop, and chop. If you, if you cut them like this, you know, down the line to where they're just round pieces, they tend to fall apart. And okay. this way they stay together a little bit better. Oh, very good, mm -hmm. very good. So what we do is we get that all in there. All right. All right, we're going to let that heat Simmer. up. Simmer, okay. So that everything cooks just a little bit. All right. And in the meantime, we're these. mashing we'll down our spaghetti. Yes, and technique to that, you take your spaghetti fork. Okay. And basically just turn it in. Yeah. Like that. And try to get all of it under the water. Well, that's good. Normally I'd use a bigger pan, Roger, but I'm not no, a chef. <laughs> no, you don't need to. So we'll let okay. that cook for a little bit. Okay. Now. Once we've got this going, we're going to take some uh, roasted garlic. Roasted, and you can buy it that way. Yeah, and it's just easier. I mean, you can roast it yourself, which I would highly suggest doing. Right. But, um, and I'll use basically a tablespoon okay. of roasted garlic. All right. Oh, my. Mm. Which again, it would be almost like spaghetti and meat sauce, but you're creating a vegetable sauce. Exactly, and you can add other things to this if you want. Um, hot peppers. Oh, yes. Like the, uh, the Carolina Reaper that you gave me. <laughs> I did. Folks, yeah. the Carolina Reaper. In fact, we're doing peppers for the month of October. And uh, hopefully I'll still have some Carolina Reapers. They are the hottest pepper on the planet. Did you try some? Yeah. Woohoo! So you're still and smoking. <laughs> yeah. It, the radioactive fallout on that's pretty, pretty intense. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now we're doing another recipe too, though, are we not? Yeah. And we well, can, let's we let's talk that. about that. Sure. So basically, I'm taking a zucchini, a squash, and cucumber. Okay. Uh, with Which some, are, are the, is this cucumber? No, that's the cucumber. That's cucumber. Uh, okay. And the recipe calls for arugula, but I couldn't find any arugula, okay. so I'm just using some romaine. All right, that's fine. And uh, you've chopped that up, by I the way. I chopped this up, and I viewers. take a potato peeler, and I make ribbons oh, out of these. Oh yes. And it works really well. Great. So can we put all that together? We will. And what we're going to do is the dressing that you use. Uh, is basically olive oil, lemon juice, a little salt, pepper, Dijon mustard. Oh my, what you've got right here. Right there. And uh, I, I assume you're going to put the recipe. Uh, the, 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 the recipe, the mm -hmm. recipe will be there, yes. Uh, uh, on our, on the website. Mm -hmm. A little salt and pepper. Um, when do we add the wine? We add the wine to this. Oh, do okay. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Not the salad. You know me and wine. <laughs> <laughs> we could add wine to the salad. Exactly. So we'll take um, the cucumber and we'll just lay it on top of the romaine. Okay. Oh, how pretty! And, we'll and they take, look like ribbons. They look like ribbons. Like like the like the ribbon candy at Christmas time. And it makes it makes the uh, the taste better. It's just uh, it's crunchier. Uh, kids will like it better. Oh, sure. You're not as likely to go, I'm not touching that. Right, right. right. But so. they, they look, it looks like it's fun to eat. Mm -hmm. So food not only needs to look pretty, but it needs to be like some excitement in eating it. Right, exactly. Good. And it just, it's, a, it's appealing. Appealing. Yeah. Oh, yes. And we're going to use some uh, just cherry tomatoes cut in half. Okay. And we'll lay them up here Okay. like that. So, And it's real simple to do. So I'm just going to pour this over the entire mixture. All right. And is that what this other plate is for here? Uh-huh. I'm, I'm going to shake it around a little we bit. got it ready to go. Now, you do want to let this marinate for about 
15 minutes. Oh, that's, yes, that yes, way yes. It kind of, it actually kind of cooks okay. the, um, the zucchini and the squash a little bit. It makes them a little bit more, more tender. tender mm -hmm. More tender. How's our spaghetti coming? It's looking good. Looking good. Okay. okay. So, Can we not just dump that out here on the plate? Oh, yeah, like of this. course we could. You will have to forgive me. I've never done this before. Oh, it just on looked the, like a good recipe. It or, is. Or, and I'm sorry, like on television. <laughs> there's a little, there's a little angst with that. Yes, it is. Yeah. Right. Or computer. If you if you and watch you can it on computer salt too. Salt and pepper that to taste. Oh, great. Okay, so our spaghetti's down. coming along here. Um, and now what we're going to do with this All is right. we're going to add the wine. Oh, good. So. Okay, looks good. We have translucent onions. It's good. Uh, where's your wooden spoon? You don't need to stir uh, that around all of that. Not until I put hand in. <laughs> okay. We're going to add a, basically <laughs> a cup of wine excited. or more as you like. I gotcha. And what you want to do is let the um, let that cook open for a minute. And basically, it's going to cook off the alcohol and, and leave the taste. Right, right, right. So while you're waiting on that, we want to use fresh herbs. You don't want to use a, a dry... Right, um, the powder, powder stuff, right. So we've got some basil, which okay. you have lots of, too. I have. I'm growing lots. That is and not from my garden, though. Or no, it's it? from Or my... did you run by? <laughs> Not that you know. Uh, and I'm basically going to use, it's, I would say, a tablespoon, maybe a little more. Okay. And of I'm raw gonna, basil. And I'm not going to, you know, mince it or anything. I'm just going to put it in there because it gives, it gives it a nice look as well. Oh, I agree. And we have some uh, oregano. Okay. Now, and is this from your garden? No, this is, okay. I actually bought, well, you could say it's from my garden, from my kitchen garden. Well, yes, you know, I keep, of course like you can. I like to keep them growing if I can and use them. Okay, well, that's good. And some thyme. Oh, my, look at that. And I never understood why they put an H in thyme. So we can tell the difference between that thyme and T-I-M-E. <laughs> that's why. Only reason. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's okay. had enough thyme. All right, all and right, good. Will, this in and you're just going to put the lid on it cut the heat down and let this simmer for about 10 minutes and all those flavors will come together now all of this is salt and pepper to your own taste right so I'm not gonna and again we talked about we could add some hot peppers can add to some this. hot peppers okay and just not the Carolina right well reapers. maybe one little piece a tiny piece I actually did use like maybe a quarter inch piece uh -huh. in a meal, and it was like seriously hot. Yeah. But like, it's good. Okay. Good. Now, um, we, we're kind of, well, we all know what we're doing here, and we do actually have a prepared plate of mm -hmm. this, so I'm going to go, where is it? Back over here. Yeah. And this actually, so we have our ribbon salad here. And we have our main entree right here, squash mm -hmm. and spaghetti. A little Parmesan cheese. Do exactly. you eat that? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And, uh, but now you might not eat that because you're a vegan. I can't eat any cheese right now. No oh, cheese. I got you. Well, that can be mine with cheese <laughs> on it. <laughs> okay. Well, um, gracious sakes, Roger, we've, we've put it all together and this is just amazing. Uh, it's simple. Um, and when you're using what we have plenty of in the summertime. Yes. Uh, I could have, when you asked me to do squash, I was like, well, that's a dead end, isn't it? But then I realized I do make that kind of pasta sauce, and I thought, well, let's do something people don't do with it. You know? Only a renaissance man <laughs> would come up with this. I appreciate that. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, Roger, Thank you. for sharing your expertise. And we'll see you in September.